knowledge dissemination for us um, uh, as uh, third in, in this session. John, thank you very much, and thank you very much indeed for the invitation to talk. It's always very interesting, very challenging when you've got a, a mixed audience. The problem is knowing what level to pitch it, so apologies to the animal scientists if I'm telling you things that you already know, if there's aspects that I'm assuming too much of my sort of aquaculture colleagues, please ask in discussions. But this is the, the topic that I have. Uh, it's questionable whether I'm going to answer the questions, but certainly I'll happily debate some points around them. So increasing sustainability of livestock production systems through better use of locally available animal feed. By way of introduction, the fairly clear point that we're all well aware of the Green Revolution, it's normally stated that that was supply-led. We suddenly have the technology to enable us to produce milk. We're now in the area of the livestock revolution, and people often argue that rather than being supply-led, the livestock revolution is being demand-driven. There's increased demand for animal products. So we're seeing a growth in livestock numbers driven by that increasing demand for animal products. And the demand for animal products is quite complex, and there are a number of factors involved, but certainly three of the factors involved will be the increase in population growth, increasing urbanization, and increased disposable income. And what we see if we look at a range of, of countries are very high annual growth rates in predicted meat consumption. I've taken some examples there. You could take some South American examples also, but by way of example, China projected annual growth rates of 3% in, in meat consumption. Southeast Asia, 3.3%. The developing world as a whole, 2.8%. When one thinks that Africa is lagging behind there, the rest of the developing world, you're looking at figures 3, 3.3 and over. Now with those sorts of growth rates, it's pretty clear that the livestock sector needs to adapt, and it needs to adapt pretty quickly, because that increase is occurring now. We're already starting to see um, response to that surge in demand. Some of the changes are gradual, and some of them are, are fairly major shifts in terms of what's happening. The next two or three slides are taken from some of the work by, by De Haan, looking at, at some of the potential ways in which the livestock industry could or has already started to respond. So one of the possibilities is that we start to see livestock be production becoming concentrated in specific areas. So particularly those um, specific areas which are favoured particularly by cheap input supplies, typically the feeds. And also favoured by good market outlets. Um, Steve referred to Livestock's Long Shadow earlier, and I'll make reference to that again. But there's some nice studies in there in, in Thailand looking at the growth of pig and poultry enterprises around Bangkok, and that's a very nice example. There are similar examples around many of the, the capitals in, in Africa and so on. So, Cheap input supplies, good market outlets, two of, two of the key points. And that is obviously going to favour urban and peri-urban livestock keeping. The second point there is, is that we're going to see changes in, in the type of production systems and a number of the livestock predict, production systems will become more specialised, become more intensive industrial type systems. Increasing size, rapidly gaining importance, and so on. Systems like that are just able to react very much faster. Not saying they're the type that we necessarily want. Not saying they're the types which are going to be sustainable. But when you've got the need to meet a rapidly increasing demand, it's one of the responses that we see. As I say, it's probably not the one that's going to be sustainable. But it, it, it's what we'll see. And I say it's probably not the one we want, because what we're going to see is a disconnection. I'm going to argue in favour of, of putting the crops and livestock back together. This response is having the reverse effect. You're typically seeing um, a disconnection. 
and that may well be occurring on, on a functional level <coughs> and also on a spatial level. You may well see a species shift and the species shift short term is likely to be away from ruminants towards non-ruminants because the, the non-ruminant enterprises typically can react very much faster to market demand. They appear to be mo more efficient. Certainly if you look at simple things like food conversion ratio, they are more efficient. But I'll make a point to you later that just looking at something simplistic like food conversion ratios will hide an awful lot. But certainly if you look in terms of, of responses, very often we'll see that species shift because pig and poultry enterprises are the ones that can respond to this increased demand for animal products more rapidly. And the other response is that we may well see economies of scale associated with vertical integration in the land, livestock, food chain. So what we see, and this is indisputable, increasing numbers of livestock accompanied by various modifications in our systems. And globally that's going to have tremendous implications. We've already heard this afternoon, we've had discussions around this point, the implications for sustainable rural livelihoods. And that's going to be inevitable because of those close linkages between livestock and livelihoods. And livestock have key roles in the agriculture sector, in rural livelihoods in general, particularly those of the poor. And production is increasing rapidly in response to the fast growing demand for livestock products that we've already said is occurring due to increases in population, increased urbanization and rising disposable income. All aspects of agriculture, fisheries as well, will be playing, playing their part. But if we look in terms of the responses over the 90s and the early part of the 21st century, the growth in the livestock sector has been outpacing the others. We're looking at just short of 4% um, annual growth rates compared with 2.7 for crops, 